Hey there, welcome to Neuropod, where we share the latest news about the Elon Musk founded company Neuralink. There's been more news to go through recently. In fact, since there are so many updates, we'll have another May update episode coming out later this month. Make sure to subscribe with notifications so that you don't miss it. The outline for this episode includes number one, confirmation of the timeline for Neuralink's human trial application. Number two, we'll follow that up with a discussion of the monkey mind pong demonstration and its relevance to Neuralink's initial goals to help paralyze patients. Next, we'll share highlights of Elon's interview with Axel Springer CEO Matthias Dufner. Then, elaborate on the potential pairing of artificial brains with Teslabot. Then, Elon was interviewed by the head of TED, Chris Anderson. There's some good highlights to share from that conversation. And then, Elon tweeted about Neuralink addressing tinnitus and morbid obesity, so we gotta share those as well. First, we have some good news. Elon has given us confirmation that the application for Neuralink human trials will be submitted before the end of the year. For audio listeners, the specific Twitter question reads, first trial application of Neuralink in a human by year end? And Elon responded with a single word answer of yes. As some astute viewers have pointed out, this tweet refers to the FDA trial application, not actual implantation in a human by year end. We did an episode on this FDA trials process that will be linked here. This tweet was sent out by Elon on April 24th, which is 18 days after this interview response about aspirationally implanting was stated on April 6th. I, I, well, we, we have um, put in our FDA application uh, uh, to have the uh, aspirationally do, do the first uh, human implant this year. It's been a little more than a year since Neuralink showcased this macaque monkey named Pager playing a video game Pong with just its mind. The demonstration included implantation of two Neuralinks in each side of his head. The narrator uses pretty simple language, but I'll break it down even more in a little bit. We can interact with the Neuralinks simply by pairing them to an iPhone, just as you might pair your phone to a Bluetooth speaker. The links record from more than 2,000 electrodes implanted in the regions of Page's motor cortex that coordinate hand and arm movements. Neurons in this region modulate their activity with intended hand movement. For example, some might become more active when he moves his hand up and others when he moves it to the right. By recording from many neurons and feeding their activity into a decoder algorithm, we are able to predict Page's intended hand movements in real time. So our brain fires small electric pulses when our hands move, or basically do anything, and Neuralink developed little itty bitty things that can detect those electric spikes. In this particular video, Neuralink is able to determine when Pager is planning to move his hand even before it moves at all. As he's playing this game, we're wirelessly streaming in real time the firing rates from thousands of neurons to a computer. Using these data, we calibrate the decoder by mathematically modeling the relationship between patterns of neural activity and the different joystick movements they produce. Pretty easy, like the narrator says, they're correlating the brain's electric spikes to the joystick movements. And next is the fun part. After only a few minutes of calibration, we can use the output from the decoder to move the cursor instead of the joystick. Pages still moves the joystick out of habit, but as you can see, it's unplugged. He's controlling the cursor entirely with decoded neural activity. This is pretty amazing. The controller isn't connected and Pager is playing the game with his mind. Here's the latest part of the video where Neuralink took this a step further and showed Pager playing the video game Pong. As you can see, Pager is amazingly good at mind pong. He's focused, and he's playing entirely of his own volition. This may seem like a quirky and not very useful thing, but the team is doing this with an admirable mission in mind. They first want to help paralyzed people wirelessly control a computer cursor and keyboard. Our goal is to enable a person with paralysis to use a computer or phone with their brain activity alone. Because they wouldn't be able to move a joystick, they would calibrate the decoder by imagining hand movements to targets. This is one of the things that causes me to be so inspired by Neuralink. 
the functionality could substantially improve one's quality of life. And then when it comes to even more ambitious things that Neuralink wants to accomplish, like helping paralyzed people walk again, how incredible could that be? The paralyzed person and their family and their friends would be greatly positively impacted. And the time is finally coming when Neuralink will be able to trial this procedure in a human. A few weeks ago, Axel Springer CEO Matthias Dufner interviewed Elon Musk. They discussed a wide variety of topics like the issue of population collapse, Tesla's Optimus robot, and my personal favorite Elon Musk founded company, Neuralink. Elon first makes it clear that the initial goal of Neuralink is to help people with brain and spine injuries. Well, yeah, I mean, Neuralink, uh, in the short term, Neuralink uh, is just about solving, um, you know, uh, brain injuries and spinal injuries and that kind of thing. So to be clear, the, the, for, for many years, Neuralink's products will just be helpful to someone who uh, has uh, lost the use of their uh, arms or arms and legs or who has... Uh, just a traumatic brain injury of some kind. Uh, that's, that's what Neuralink will be useful for for many years. Then an entertaining question from Matthias. Is Neuralink still your most important project? You said that Neuralink is among all your projects for you the most uh, important one. Is that still true? Um, I know I said it, it, it could be. I wouldn't say for sure it is the most important, but it could be the most important. He goes on to describe the importance of merging our human biological brains with computers. With an advanced Neuralink, it would be possible to increase the speed of interaction among our limbic system, cortex, and the digital world. Think about how long it takes to open your browser, then type in your query, and read the result that Google shows you. If someone says, yeah, this process does take forever, or they say, no way, it's faster than ever before. Those are both correct. In the early 2000s, this might have sounded like such a first world problem, but fast forward to 2040 and it's probably going to seem incredibly slow. By that time, we could be able to think of something and have it appear as quickly as Google can load a result. Next, we have what I believe is the most interesting thing that Neuralink and Teams could bring to fruition in the future. Pairing Neuralink artificial brains with Tesla humanoid robots. Let's recall this clip from our January update episode where I mentioned Neuralink could work on creating artificial brains. Taking my earlier thought a step further, I'd be surprised if Elon hasn't already considered the possibility of Neuralink developing an artificial brain to pair alongside Teslabot. With enough knowledge and data of how brains work, I don't see what would stop something like this from being built in the very long term. Now, fast forward a few months to where Elon responds to this question. Could you, know? you imagine that one day we would be able to download our human brain capacity into a Optimus? Yes. I think that is, I'm not saying this is, I think, I think it is possible, I think, to do that. It is possible. Which would be a, a different way of eternal life, because we would also download our personalities into a bot. Yes, we could, we could download uh, the things that we believe make ourselves unique. Now, of course, if you're not in a body anymore, that there's definitely going to be some difference there, you know. So, um, but as far as preserving our memories, um, our, our personality, if you will, uh, we could. I think we could do that. Although it wasn't stated explicitly, based on the conversation context, Neuralink is the company that would enable this downloading. This has meaningful implications for everyone. For example, like Matthias said, it could enable something close to eternal life. Elon has often discussed the fact that digital ghost versions of humans who pass away are left on the internet. The computers uh, are an extension of ourselves. Um, and when we die, there's like we have like a digital ghost. You know, all of our text messages and social media and emails, and it's it's quite eerie actually when someone dies and and they're, but everything online is still there. As further advancements are made, the ratio of our digital selves versus our biological selves is going to become larger and larger. An interesting ratio to roughly calculate would be the um, amount of compute that is digital. Um, divided by the amount of compute that is biological. And how does that ratio change over time? And with the, the, there's so much digital compute happening so fast 
that that ratio is uh, increasing rapidly. Will humanity eventually become fully digital? Now, I want to elaborate further on the idea of Neuralink developing an artificial brain, and I think it's best to start with an analogy. Most of you are probably familiar with Tesla and their ambitions to develop full self-driving functionality for their vehicles. As you might imagine, this is a really difficult problem to solve. Companies like Ford, Volkswagen, Toyota are all going to give it a shot as well, but I think it's worth contemplating how much of a data advantage Tesla has. By architecting their vehicles from the ground up, manufacturing many of their own parts, and writing nearly all of their own code, Tesla is able to gather data from their entire fleet of vehicles around the world. This data is then used to train many of Tesla's neural networks and refine the self-driving capability. Simply stated, Tesla is leveraging the driving data of the entire fleet to help all individual cars drive better. Might Neuralink be able to do the same with human brain data? Imagine 1 million people who all have Neuralink implants and consented to sharing their brain data, just like a million people who drive Tesla vehicles and consented to sharing their driving data. Neuralink can then work on pinpointing specific target areas in the brain for optimal stimulation, just like Tesla can work on optimizing driving ability. Tesla is essentially building the brain of an artificial driver that then gives commands to the Tesla robot on four wheels. I don't see why Neuralink couldn't do the same for TeslaBot on two legs. Furthermore, Tesla can provide feedback and insights that drivers may not normally pay attention to. For example, Tesla knows how frequently a driver follows the car in front of it closely. And then they can also measure the amount of force used to decelerate the vehicle. Same goes for how frequently a driver turns aggressively or isn't paying attention to the road. And these factors can then be quantified in the form of a feedback score for the driver. When the feedback is good, the driver is more likely to continue that good driving. And these same concepts could be applied at Neuralink with optimizing brain performance. Recall earlier in the episode when Neuralink was able to calibrate the decoder after just a few minutes? Imagine how much detailed brain data they'll have when widespread adoption of Neuralinks occur, and correspondingly how precise those movements will get. Maybe a full artificial brain would take years or decades to develop, but even just replicating parts of the brain like the motor cortex could have many applications when paired with a Tesla bot. Next, Elon did another interview with the head of the TED organization, Chris Anderson. This was somewhat of a two-part interview as Elon talked right before the Tesla Cyber Rodeo Party and then live on the TED stage. The interesting parts about Neuralink came during the first interview where Elon referenced prior work in the field of brain-related research. He also stated the importance of Neuralink working on a product that consumers could buy and would want to buy. I mean, the, the fundamental principles of, uh, of reading neurons uh, so, so doing read-write on neurons w with tiny electrodes um, have been demonstrated for decades. Um, so it, it's not like uh, this is uh, the, the concept is new. The, what, the, the, the problem is that there's no product uh, that works well that you can go and uh, and buy. So it's it's all sort of in research labs, right. um, and it's it's not it's. Uh, like there's those words like some cord sticking out of your your head and it it's quite gruesome and it's it's really um there's, there's no good product uh, mm. that 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 actually does a good job and is high bandwidth and safe and something you'd actually that you could buy and would want to buy for reference the two main other prior devices that have had a large positive impact on some patients are the utah electrode array and the deep brain stimulator Max discussed these at the 2019 Neuralink launch event. In the Utah array case, the, the rigid sharp metal electrodes produce a, a fairly strong immune response. And this doesn't end up hurting the patient, but it does mean that you lose the ability to record single spikes over some period of time, usually between one and a couple years. Um, there's also a big percutaneous connector through the scalp. So you need to plug in big external electronics, and you're never really confident that the risk of infection is, is gone for the duration that you have the implant. Um, Deep brain stimulators solve a, just solve a very different type of problem. They are very effective for some Parkinson's patients, but they have only a couple electrodes, and they're really geared towards injecting large amounts of current, not recording single spikes. Um, so they're really a very different. Uh, the DBS is really just a very different type of um, platform for a di very different type of problem. An hour later in the event, Elon said this. 
Um, people in academia right now are quite constrained um, in working with the, the, the Utah arrays. That, that's the most advanced thing in academia. Um, and our, our system is at least 100, arguably 1,000 times. Um, well, at the, on the order of 100, I said, I suppose, relative to the potential of the Utah array towards the magnitude uh, improvement um, at the experimental level. You might be wondering what specific types of neurological problems Neuralink could help with. For example, could Neuralink help with tinnitus? Elon confirmed Neuralink is definitely going to help with tinnitus, which is a ringing or buzzing noise in one or both ears. A quick Google search shows that around 15 of every 100 people in the United States has some form of tinnitus. This is a frustrating condition to deal with. I recently found out that one of my relatives has it. He sometimes gets headaches and is now quite sensitive to any noises with lots of bass. Research says that tinnitus isn't entirely preventable, but when I think about how ridiculously loud some places get, like the UK nightclubs or I recently went to a concert in Sun's basketball game, my goodness, the volume literally feels double as strong as it used to be. Anyway, tangent aside, I really hope my generation and future generations, and also people who need it now, are able to access these Neuralink devices as fast as possible. When asked about curing tinnitus, here's Elon's full response. Definitely, might be less than five years away, as current version Neuralinks are semi-generalized neural read-write devices with around a thousand electrodes, and tinnitus probably needs less than a thousand. Future gen Neuralinks will increase electrode count by many orders of magnitude. Next, Elon had this to say about Neuralink addressing morbid obesity. Certainly physically possible. We're working on bridging broken links between brain and body. Neuralinks in motor and sensory cortex bridging past weak or broken links in neck and spine to Neuralinks in spinal cord should theoretically be able to restore full body functionality. This again highlights the fact that Neuralink is first prioritizing paralyzed patients. Elon goes on to write, It is an electronics, mechanical, software engineering problem for the Neuralink device that is similar in complexity level to smartwatches, which are not easy. Plus the surgical robot, which is comparable to state-of-the-art CNC machines. No need for AI, neural networks, or machine learning quite yet. If you've engineered or manufactured smartwatches or phones, please join Neuralink. Your skills are directly applicable. Neuralink continues to look to hire the best talent. They have plenty of roles available in almost every department, both in Fremont, California, and where Tesla's largest factory is being built, Austin, Texas. For example, one role that was recently highlighted by Mike, the head recruiter at Neuralink, is a software engineering role for brain-computer interface applications. For roles like this, prior experience related to biology, neuroscience, or neurotech would probably be helpful, but many of the other roles, like building internal software tools, don't require any neuro-related background at all. Elon consistently reiterates this. I think we also especially need people who have worked on, on, product, worked on and shipped products. So if you've like, shipped a smartwatch or a phone, uh, or you know, any kind of complex electronics or complex device, um, or advanced medical devices, uh, we'd love for you to contact us and consider working here. So, um, and, and a very important point to emphasize is that you do not need to have prior experience on brains. So, a lot of people think, well, I couldn't possibly work Neuralink because I don't know anything about how brains work. And that's okay, you can learn, um, but we need software engineering, we need mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, like I said, chip design, robotics, um, and uh, all the things that a company needs uh, to work. So. The team is quite small, but growing. Here's a chart of the employee growth according to LinkedIn. And here's the data for Neuralink's increased LinkedIn and Twitter followers. Pretty interesting to see the bump up in Twitter followers during the past month. I wonder why that might be. Like I mentioned earlier, since there's been more Neuralink news flow, and we released this video so early in the month, we're planning on releasing another May update. So make sure to subscribe for more of these update episodes. Also, as an extra incentive to be subscribed and watch the update episodes sooner rather than later, if you're one of the first 2,000 viewers, we'll show fewer ads to you, and then the number of ads will increase as the video hopefully gets viewed more. If you missed our last video comparing Neuralink to Kernel, check that out here. Kernel is working on a brain interface that does not require surgery. Thanks for watching. Hope to catch you at the next episode.